Thank you. It is a homegrown benefit. Okay, I'll start right away. This image shows an optical illusion. If you keep staring at the spot where the white lines intersect, you will see a faint, fuzzy gray dot. Like these gray dots, something that only exists where two opposite worlds meet. I have always been interested in between spaces, and I call it a middle ground. Today, I like to talk about how to share the ideas and values of landscape architecture with the public. I'm Korean, but now I'm speaking in English. I had to learn how to speak a foreign language to communicate with other world and get in a different system. In the development-oriented urban practices, as a landscape architect, have we communicated with the public or practitioners in other fields through our own language? When I work with architects, urban planners, engineers, I sometimes feel like they consider the landscape architecture less significant or even naive. They usually ask us to follow their rules, their logic, and their design languages. Each language has a unique way of thinking and value embedded in the culture and the people. I have been afraid of losing our own language in order to fit in or survive the development-oriented urban practices. I'm going to share my um, landscape inst installation project and landscape architecture project, um, which try to communicate with the public and other artists to share the beauty of landscape. I'm presenting four topics such as archiving time, respecting ground, celebrating every day, and creating heritage. This is a Korean drama which is getting very popular in Netflix. In second episode, a giant tree in a country village was shown. Traditionally, a big tree at each village has a significant symbolic meaning. After the success of the drama, it attracted people's attention and the Cultural Heritage Administration of Korea recently designated the tree as a natural monument. This tree got lucky, but in reality, many, many trees have been cut down or poorly maintained. Our cities give little room for these trees to survive. Our village forest is an indoor installation for Clay Ark Gimhae Museum. They invited several architects to explore the local architecture around the museum. I was the only landscape architect. I decided to make a story about sacred trees instead of architecture and to make an imaginary forest with individual sacred trees. It used to be an agricultural area, but small factories are encroaching and replacing old houses. Blue roofs are mostly factories. We traced the silhouette of each tree and gave it a house of light that could illuminate its bare branches. We also recorded the legendary story behind the tree by listening to local residents. There are no children or young people left in the village. They say that there are no one left that they can pass the story down to. These are husband and wife trees in winter and summer. When you approach space, 
each other and stare at the tree. The light will come on. A tree that you were not aware of suddenly appears before you as a cold creature. The first step to protecting them may be to fully recognize them. I was asked to make a public art piece for Nuksap Pyeong Station, which will be a main access point to the future Yongsan Park. The station is located on the Green Corridor to link Namsan Mountain to Han River. The site was first floor on the underground right above the subway platform. It was almost an abandoned space. The city wanted to install public art project under the theme of botanic station. Pine trees are very important to Koreans. For example, famous photographer Bae byung -woo took a series of pictures of pine forest. Pine forest even appear in the second verse in our national anthem. The image of pine forest among the public is more like a picture by Bae byung -woo but as landscape architects, we do know that pine forests are unstable status of ecological succession process. Pines compete with oak tree and hornbeam. The forest is not a static object, but constantly changing battlefield. I wanted to share the idea of ever-changing forest and provide an occupiable Space for citizens. So we went to Namsan Pine Forest and mapped out the existing trees. Six species are coexisting with pine trees and many more in the understory. I translated the spacing and the relationship among the trees into column structure. Different woods represent different species. The underground subway has an imaginary window to an imaginary forest, yet the cyclical time and ecological process of a real forest is represented through the architectural elements and lighting effects. The lighting schedule is pre-programmed -pre in my cell phone according to the change of the colors of pine forest. It is 40 meters long, and you can take a moment and walk through the forest in your very busy commute. The underground forest is meant for cultural events, like mini concerts, or just a short break from a hectic day. This project inspired animation artist duo Yellow Shed in Los Angeles, and they made a, a short animation film bring more life to the forest. Let's take a look. As cities grow, buildings rise, 
verticality becomes a symbol of civilization. Recently, I started to explore the horizontal. Let's make people look down instead of looking up and pay attention to the ground, the low, the trivial, and the weak, the earth. Let's be humble before the nature. This explore, uh, exploration leads to a series of carpet pieces. The first one is a public garden in an apartment complex. Let's imagine that a magic carpet descends from the sky and it sets down on the ground. The vital force of the earth breaks through the carpet and creates a beautiful garden. Kids stop by on their way from school and look out the world. And the earth, the power of the earth completes this heterotopian ground, a meadow carpet. Black meadow represents a world deprived of life. There are various traditions of making brooms out of plants, but the local heritages of making brooms with plants are disappearing. Venice architecture biennially 2020 overlapped with the outbreak of COVID-19. The theme of Korean pavilion was future school. I was originally asked to install like a, um, indoor plants, but I felt like the tropical indoor plants are out of context and it felt completely um, on, on, not appropriate at all. So um, I thought of a dying and sterile field made out of disappearing brooms, which represent endangered ecological habitats and local craftsmanship. It is a reed field along the Gumgang River. You may see an estuary bank in a distance. The ecosystem of brackish water is disturbed because of the dam, and the reed fields continue to disappear. There is a small village where residents make brooms out of reed flowers, but they don't make brooms anymore because few people use brooms today. That is the reed flower broom that I bought. It's very expensive. Uh, Future School finally opened in 2021. At the time, there were many deaths in Italy, and traveling abroad was very hard. I was supposed to fly to Venice and finishing stitching myself, but I couldn't go. So this nice gentleman took over and stitched all together for me. Many visitors and students are stepping on and sitting down on this black meadow. The diameter is eight meter. It did not discriminate other species, so we welcome dogs. And cats. So if we embrace living with others, the sprout will come back and have a life again. Okay, uh, when my son was five years old, um, we had to kill some time. So we um, decided to pick a word and you know, draw separately and come back and compare. 
and I was no different from other working moms, so I drew like this in 10 seconds and, you know, checking emails and sending messages and keeping myself busy. But after a while, after I look at my son's drawing like this, I was so ashamed of myself because to him, house is apartment. And the city is all about tall buildings and transportation without any trees, even though her, um, his mother is a landscape architect. So I was ashamed that I drew like this because I barely lived in that house with um, pointed roof, with chimney and picket fences in my life. And I made that up, and I felt like I almost trained to draw like this. Let's face it, in Seoul, where more than 50% of houses are apartments, these tall buildings are home to many, many people. Construction companies competitively promoted their apartment brands, and landscape became a merchandise. Each brand launched a series of landscape products looking like a resort, but after a while, they become alike. What if we change the 50% of our, our home landscape in more sustainable or poetic way? Our team was commissioned to critically review the past practice of Samsung Ramian apartment landscape. We analyzed 20 Ramian complexes to provide a vision for the future Ramian landscape. The main ideas behind the new direction are to let nature be nature and to let people be the center of their lives. We studied the natural habitats and tried to bring an ecological system into an apartment, not just natural elements. The project site is Remian Gallery, which is a promotion building for future Remian apartment housing. We design prototypes for future Remian landscapes such as forests, streams, and gardens. We name it a nature gallery. The original design represented a well-maintained landscape, the tidy landscape for the past Remian, but the new Remian will be like this. Outdoor living spaces will be carefully juxtaposed with the forest and stream. September. Okay, please visit. What about playgrounds? There are more than 75,000 playgrounds in Korea. Cookie cutter playgrounds with a big play equipment are being produced over and over. Why don't we let children play with dirt, play with imagination, and play on their own? 
let's bring nature back to their lives. There was a vacant space in a large park in Jeonju City. There are big cedar trees along the periphery of the site. Landscape architects, environmental educators, architects, and carpenters were teamed up, and I was the leading designer and a master planner for the project, funded by the UNICEF Korea and Jeonju City. We tried to make more play opportunities than play equipment. It started as only outdoor playground, but we, landscape architect, convinced the mayor to invest more funding to make a playhouse. Luckily enough, the mayor got convinced, and um, the local architect joined us. The architect and I dis discussed a lot the architect wanted to make the house as a continuation of the playground and the, the house that feels like an outdoor space. We finally talked in landscape and we finally used the same language. Kids here learn themselves to play with simple instruments like the dirt, leaves, rope, and water. Local teenagers were invited to the team, and they designed and built their own play shelters by themselves. Children are adding stories and memories in the playground, and the nature becomes their playground and a part of their life. UNICEF에서는 아이들의 자기 결정권 그리고 아이들이 정말 스스로 결정해서 놀고 어, 무언가 의사결정을 할수 있는 그 맘껏이라는 키워드를 아주 중요하게 쓰고 있습니다. 이 맘껏 숲은 사실 그 다양한 연령층의 아이들을 위해서 좀 다용도로 쓸수 있게 만들어졌어요. 어, 우리가 놀이터에서 바깥 공간에서 연속성만 생각하기 쉬운데 이 맘껏 숲앤 하우스에서는 그 건물과 건물 바깥의 경계가 모호해지고 아이들이 어떤 공간적인 구분, 어른들이 정해놓은 룰이 아니라 자기네들이 놀고 싶은 방식으로 끊임없이 어, 탐색하면서 놀수 있게 계획이 되었습니다. 그래서 맘껏 숲앤 하우스에서는 어린이를 통해서 어린이의 눈을 통해서 놀이를 통해서 이 공간을 공유하고 기억들을 쌓아가는 곳이 되길 바랍니다. 전주의 아이들이 이곳에서 놀아서 어, 나중에 한 10년, 20년 후에 또 물어보면 아, 나 어린 시절에 덕진공원 맘껏 숲에서 놀았어. 이런 기억들이 쌓아갈 수 있다면 정말 의미 있는 공간이 되지 않을까 생각했습니다. We are approaching the last topic, creating heritage. The next project is a story about the miners in a post-mining town. It is located in Tabuk, which used to be a major coal mining area. The economy was really good at the time, but since the closing of the mines in eight, 1980s, the local economy has been devastated and many people have left the town. I was invited to participate, um, participate in a local art fair to make a small plaza for the old mining company building, which is a museum now. Um, what struck me the most was the old black rubber boots display in the foot wash stand. They were saying, like, you can live without your wife, but you can live without your boots. More touching phrase was this, when I wash my boots on the way home from work, I breathed a sigh of relief. 
today I came back safely and will meet my beloved wife and children again. The contact between the boots and the water was very important ritual to realize that you came home alive. The moment of pure joy, it has to be passed down to their children and grandchildren. Another striking thing was underground tunnel mapping. The lines faded over time, but when you blow up, you can see the symbols of the depth and orientation and the rock composition of each day's mining routine. Daily digging job appeared only an inch on the map, and it took more 20 years to get this map. We wanted to make this legacy more visible and show it intuitively. Miners' black boots are replaced by children's color boots so that kids don't have to worry about their shoes getting wet and being scolded by their mothers. The contact between boots and water can continue and joy can revive. Let the descendants of miners be proud of their fathers and grandfathers. Local kindergarten kids visited one day and it started raining. So a retired miner gave them raincoats and they had fun. Lastly, I'm going to share my um, latest installation in Doksudong Palace which is right next to the um, City Hall of Seoul government. I was invited as an artist for the exhibition titled Imaginary Gardens. This project was especially exciting for me because the music and the dance were created under the same title, Garden Carpet, inspired my work. Doksugung Palace has a sad story. It was proclaimed as the Imperial Palace of Korean Empire in 1897, but the empire did not last long. It was a period when Western and Japanese powers interfered in the internet affairs of Korea and modernization and westernization proceeded. The old photograph of the emperor's family caught my eyes. At the time, the emperor's financial resources were very weak, so ready-made furniture was imported from England. The carpet was one of them. I wonder what if I recreate the pattern of carpet with Korean native plants and make one of a kind. It's all hand painted. There was a lot of work.
plants turn into clouds and a garden flies away to the sky. Time passes and life and death repeat itself. Garden is where we experience such a providence of nature. The empire is gone, garden carpet is gone, the life goes on, there lies, there lies a legacy. Power can bring changes faster. Power comes from public empathy. If we move the public through the common language of the landscape, we may be able to have more power to fight this crisis and make changes. I would like to thank my people who made all this possible, and thank you for being part of IFLA 2022. Thank you.